Hello, welcome back to part two of if you're not feeling good, here are some things that I'd like to tell you that maybe you'd like to implement in your life. Take what you will, leave what you will. Welcome. I, a few weeks ago, released a video that is part one to this, which was covering the three fundamental pillars of our health, happiness, well-being, in my opinion. I think that they're the baseline, things that we need to work on um, initially before we can kind of implement any of these things that I'm gonna be talking about in this video. So I have that linked in the description if you are interested. Um, and I hope that you found the previous video helpful. If you had um, listened to it all, let me know. I'd love to, I'd love to know. So I invite you, as I did previously, to set up a nice, clean, comfortable space, get a nice drink, come outside with me, get comfy um, so we can look inward and Reevaluate, evaluate, plan. I'm rambling. Let's get into it. So, to start off with, who do you surround yourself with? I'm sure you've heard um, the saying that we are the culmination of the five people that we're closest to in our life, three to five people that we spend the most time with. Which totally makes sense because as humans, we are highly attuned to people's energies uh, and we, will, we wanna be liked and accepted. So we might adjust kind of our behaviors around certain people. And I think as well, we're all a slightly different version of ourselves around people. I think everyone kind of brings something out, um, some part out of us. Um, so, How do you feel when I tell you that you're a culmination of the five people that are closest to you or that you spend the most time with? How does that make you feel? Does that excite you? Are you, do you resonate with that? Are you like, wow, yeah, I am in a positive way? Or are you like, oh, wow, I am, that makes sense. Is it negative for you? Do you, want to be a reflection of those five people around you? I think that's an important question to ask yourself. And separately, do these people make you feel good? Do they make you feel good about yourself, about your goals, your outlook, your values? Do these people support you? Do you feel supported by them? And is the relationship that you guys have equal? And I think a lovely question to ask yourself is, is it an honor to be associated with these people? I think we are very lucky that if we have one, two, three, four, five people in our life that we can we consider an honor to be associated with. I think that is a sign of a really beautiful, healthy, equal relationship. Um, because relationships are conscious decisions, right? However we found ourselves in them, we decide to stay, we decide to show up, we decide to put as much effort that we put in as we do. I've really struggled to cultivate friendships that have felt good in the past because I have, I know what I like, I know what I want, and I kind of have no interest in anything else, um, you know, for better or for worse. Um, but it's really only been in the last year or so that I do have a few people in my life that I consider an honor to be associated with. And it's with those relationships that I, they, they're, they're the relationships that make me feel best about myself. Um, and that I want to go through life with. Whoever you surround yourself with has a massive, massive sway on your life, your decisions, your choices, your actions, your outlook, your values, and the person you are as a whole, obviously. The great thing is, as I mentioned, is that you have control as to whether or not you allow them to have this influence on you by associating with them. You don't have to cut people out immediately. 
um, but take notice of how you feel around individual people, the kind of person that you're around them, that you are around them. And if you can see them in your, if you can see them in the life that you want to create for yourself. Again, those are three really important questions. I'll say them again. Um, take notice of how you feel around individuals. Take notice of the kind of person you are around those individuals and ask yourself if you can see them in the life that you want to have for yourself in the future. Are they there? Do they fit in? Um, do they help get you there? All right, next up, hello, small bug. Um, do you have time for yourself, especially alone time? It can be really easy to get swept up in relationships, work, responsibilities. When was the last time that you did something just for you, especially just you? It can be as grand as booking a solo trip somewhere in the world or as having a cup of coffee out on the deck for half an hour in the morning reading a book by yourself. The important thing is that you don't have anything to really achieve through this. You're simply just doing it for yourself. And maybe like what you're doing for yourself is to achieve something for yourself and that's fine. But the important thing is that there's no ulterior motive. It's just like you're the only person that you're trying to please with whatever it is that you're doing. I, uh, yeah, I recently went for a solo drive up in the mountains um, on a rainy day. I was feeling pretty crap um, for the few days before. And um, even that morning, like I had decided the night before that I would go and do this. Uh, I'd never done this before. And I was really excited. And then when I woke up, I was like, uh, I, don't, I don't really want to, it's out of my comfort zone. It's not even a big deal, um, but it's out of my comfort zone. But I knew that I was craving a drive through like windy mountain roads um, and I didn't mind having the windows down and getting a bit of rain in and it was lovely. It was only a few hours of my time um, but it was that just the simple action of doing something for myself, um, not needing anyone else's approval, not needing anyone else to come with me that said like you know their desire didn't impact my final action because I could just do whatever the heck I wanted to do. Um, it was really soothing overall. So I encourage you to write down a list, big or small, of things that you want to do, especially like leave a little category or a big category for things that you want to do alone. Um, Something that I love to remind myself of is that the person we spend the most time with in our lives is ourselves. So I think it's really important to be putting time, effort and energy into nurturing that relationship you have with yourself. Because, you know, if I don't love myself, it's a pretty miserable life. Um, and if I'm not doing what makes me happy and doing stuff just for me, sometimes, it's a pretty miserable life. Okay, the next one. To get a bit meta for a second, um, what content do you consume and how frequently? Content is the most readily available it's ever been. No surprise there. Um, with also so much being pumped out on a daily basis, there is always something new to watch. Um, FOMO is real. Most of us are very reliant on technology like social media and platforms like YouTube. The way I like to think about my technology consumption um, and the relationship that I want to have with it is how much am I consuming versus creating. Human beings, I believe, are innately creative. Every single person, um, whether that's painting or coming up with 
logistical solutions to a complex maths problem or fighting a case in court. We are creative beings. Therefore, it's my belief that we should be creating far more than we should be consuming. I think we should be consuming for rest, like I watch a TV show, an episode or two each night after dinner. Um, I think we should be consuming for inspiration, um, for things that we want to create, um, even if it's like relevant or not to like the mode that we like to create form to create from the most. Consumption should be to fuel and to inspire, to rest and to rejuvenate for more creation and more output. And so, the, ideally, the content that we consume should be reflective of that. And a lot of the time these days, it's just simply not. So my suggestion would be to reevaluate the platforms that you regularly use and the accounts that you follow. For example, I don't have TikTok, never have, still have zero interest in it, and um, I'm so pleased on a daily basis that I do not have it because for one, it's not the type of content that I want to be creating. I don't really care for it. Yeah, there's definitely funny things on there and I have seen many TikToks before and they are very entertaining. Um, but I also know that I would be the type of person to get addicted to it and I simply do not want that low energy, self-loathing vibe um, in my life that I then have to fight off. So TikTok is not for me. I check Instagram every few days or so. I don't have it on my phone. I just have it on my computer and I check kind of for messages. Um, and I'll check it like every year, every now and then for updates. I'm a normal person. I like to see what other people are doing. Um, I do have Facebook, which I check every few weeks. To be honest, I couldn't care less about that um, place either. I just sometimes get messages on there. And um, yeah, Instagram and YouTube, I use, as I said. Obviously, I use YouTube. Um, but I don't actually consume that much content on there. I follow accounts that are conducive to um, the type of content I like to watch for inspiration and then also for entertainment as well. Yeah, it's hard enough to manage my consumption of um, Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. And they're all, they've all been curated by me intentionally to fuel me rather than hold me down. So um, I, it is really helpful for me to look back to how much am I consuming versus creating to try to keep that consumption down because if I'm not creating a lot, then I'm either consuming too much or I shouldn't be spending like, or I, or I don't, I don't, I need to look at what I, I need to look at my consumption because clearly it's not conducive to that creation. Um, yeah. Okay. Only a couple more to go. I love this one. Gratitude. When we start recognizing all of the things that we can be grateful for the big and the small like how beautiful this breeze is um, it's such a nice temperature um, today something really to be grateful for um, our lives really improve when we recognize these things I have noticed that insanely significantly I cannot stress it enough um, at the end of my yoga practice each morning um, I have this little practice where I just continue to keep my eyes closed and recount or just think of the things in the last 24 hours or so that I am grateful for. Um, whether it's the last, what happened in the last 24 hours or last week, um, and then it kind of goes to what I have upcoming in the day and the general things that I'm grateful for. And I think it started off with me finding things that I should be grateful for 
um, but I wasn't necessarily like really feeling true gratitude for like having a roof over my head and having food on the table and having a healthy body. But even as I would say those things at the start, not really believing them, as soon as I was saying them in this form that I am grateful for this, it immediately shifted it because I am grateful for a roof over my head. Yeah, I am grateful for a roof over my head because the alternative is no roof over my head, no shelter, no safety. Yes, I'm grateful for that. Oh my God, I'm so grateful for a roof over my head. I'm so grateful to have food on the table. Again, yeah, wow, the alternative, oh my gosh. And then to be able to, you know, by extension, go to the markets, um, to be able to be in this stage of my life where I just simply cook whatever the heck I want. There's so many million things to be grateful for in there. To have a healthy body, my gosh, it enables me to like sit here in like kind of like a cross-legged or like knees sideways position, um, you know, like to be able to do yoga, to be able to exercise in a way that I love, to be able to walk without pain, just to have all my limbs. Like truly, there are so many things to be grateful for. Every day I look out at the weather and whatever the weather is, I'm grateful for it because like if it's another beautiful sunny day, wow, it's another beautiful sunny day. But if it's raining or if it's a bit stormy or it's a bit cooler or if it's a bit warmer, I'm like, oh, wow, this changed. This is fun. This is exciting. This keeps me on my toes. It's something to be grateful for. Yeah, gosh. Um, <laughs> and also with that, when I go through and I think what I have to be grateful for, I realize that, as I said, how much there is to be grateful for and therefore how significantly it outweighs any problems that I'm having in the day. And it also has that kind of tendency to remember your place in the world and how big and beautiful and, you know, uncontrollable so much of the world is, so much of our lives are. But to be able to have control over what we are grateful for, it's soothing, it's calming, it's empowering. It just, it just like fuels my soul. Um, it's, yeah. And that also all extends to noticing the little things, the way, like I was having a shower the other night um, and I left kind of the door open so light could come in and I had the lights off in the bathroom and the light was hitting the droplets on the shower door and then reflecting that shadow onto like the tiles of the shower and it was just like these really cool beautiful little spots that I immediately just noticed and I was like wow like all these little synchronicities and things that I couldn't have I couldn't have planned I, I yeah, I, yeah I don't know <laughs> yeah so I would encourage you to write a list of five things that you have to be grateful for each morning um, for the next week and see if, you, see if you do truly feel grateful for what you're writing down um, and see how it makes you feel. And if something doesn't go your way, think, how can I be grateful for this? Or is there something that I can still be grateful for here? Um, I always like to think that everything happens for a reason and that whatever path we're on is the path that we're supposed to be on. So to be able to kind of stop and smell the roses along the way with these little gratitude practices, um, I really love. The second last one, time outside. Like I believe we're made to move, I believe that we're made to be outside. Immersing our hands and feet in soil, in sand, in the grass. Even though I'm sitting here on a picnic blanket, um, don't mind me. 
One of the reasons that I love the ocean, and I was thinking about this um, last Saturday, I had the opportunity to swim in the ocean. One of the reasons I love it is that I feel like it is the most, it is the place that you can truly be immersed in nature in like the most potent and true sense. You're literally in the water. And no wonder, like, I feel like the power of nature is so easily conveyed through being in the ocean, how amazing you feel afterwards, how your skin glows, not from sunburn or too much sun, but from that beautiful, salty, fresh water. My hair always looks and feels fantastic afterwards. Like I didn't, I went home and I rinsed my body, but I didn't rinse my hair because I just liked it salty and it looked great the next day. I encourage you to organize a trip outdoors, whether that's by yourself or with loved ones, whether that's to the beach, whether that's on a hike, uh, through the rainforest, rock climbing outside, going for a walk in the park, gardening, fruit picking. Just get outside and especially my hair, um, especially I am a firm believer in getting about 10 minutes of sun a day. Um, places like Australia, the sun is very harsh, especially in summer. So you've got to be really careful. And again, this is my professional unsolicited advice but 10 minutes of sun in the morning, I find wakes me up. If I can look at the sun before I look at a screen, I find that it helps my circadian rhythm. Um, and I just feel so much more in tune with my body, with the day, with nature, um, because I'm starting my day with the sun rather than with like an artificial light. And vitamin D, I don't have scientific evidence to back me up in this moment, but vitamin D is significantly improves your mood. When I was in year 12, um, if you've seen that video of me talking about my experience of depression, my experience with depression in year 12. Um, one of my mum, my mum helped me so much through that. Um, one of the things she made me do was go out and sit in the sun um, for half an hour every day. This was in like autumn, winter in Australia. So the UV ray was much better. Um, she, was, she was looking after me, but that alone helped bring me back to the person that I actually am. So I would highly, highly recommend it. As I said, we're meant to be outdoors um, in a safe way. We're not meant to be in a dark room with artificial light um, or just even not getting any direct light. Um, I think that's conducive to our health and happiness overall. Finally, the last one, water. I'll keep this short because I think we all know that water is vital to our health, um, but we're probably not drinking enough. My biggest recommendation would be to have a water bottle beside your bed so you can wake up and have like a nice big few gulps first thing in the morning. I do that every day, I'm in the habit. Um, and also I bring a water bottle around with me everywhere. I have a water bottle um, right here nice and filled. I take it with me if I'm going out in the car somewhere, it's always in my bag. Even if I'm going to a cafe, water bottle. Um, I bring it around the house with me as well as I'm going about my day because it reminds me to drink um, and it also is no effort to drink if I need to. If I'm consumed with work or I'm in like a flow, my water bottle's right there, pick it up, drink no skin off my back. Whereas I'm lazy, um, I would see an empty glass next to me and not go and fill it up um, until I was really, really thirsty, which when we're really thirsty, we're kind of getting dehydrated. 
So, that is all. There's a reason that nothing is revolutionary in this video or the previous video. They're basic, very simple aspects of our life that I'm sure we all to some extent knew before. We probably knew everything that I covered in this video. But I think there's something about having a reminder that's really important. And that if you put it in this context of, okay, hey, I recognize that I'm not feeling that good. Why might this be? If you list these reasons that could significantly contribute to your overall health and happiness, I think it really reframes things and makes you realize how important they are. Um, and I hope that it's made you realize and get excited by the fact that, hey, these things are so simple. They're basic and that they're, uh, most of them can be we can listen to the innate cues that our body has for us surrounding most of them. We can listen to our intuition. We don't, they're not things that we really have to think deeply about. Yeah, our lives are based and built on these simple yet fundamental things. We can't, we can't live without sleep, good food, exercise. And if we don't have this sturdy base we don't get this baseline right how can we realistically and healthily expect ourselves to do anything more to flourish our lives with the things that make us happy or the things that fulfill us or bring us joy we can't we've got to get these things right first before we move on to any of the little flourishes that make our lives happy make our lives good. How can we expect anything great from ourselves without providing our bodies and minds with the basic elements it needs to optimally function? The brilliant nature of these aspects are that they all feed off each other and help the others thrive, as I mentioned in the previous video and the start of this one. They work in harmony, so if we improve one aspect, we are no doubt improving many others. The same can be said for when one aspect or a few are neglected, they all suffer. Which is why the best thing we can do, in my opinion, when we notice that something has slipped or that we're not feeling our best, we go back to these basics and focus on them. They're also the easiest things to focus on and get back on track because as I said, all we need to do is listen to our bodies and what we need and also arming ourselves with this knowledge um, and if you go on to consult professionals um, arming yourself with the knowledge that they provide you so when your mind's kind of playing tricks on you and you don't want to listen to your body or it's telling you different things or you're finding it hard to listen to your intuition you have these basic things to go back to Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching um, both part one and part two of this video. I know they're long, but I hope that they were helpful um, and that you come away feeling a bit clearer, excuse me, more positive and ready to listen to your body and your intuition. And they're excited by it. I think there's something so beautiful and so empowering by listening to our bodies and recognizing what we need and what we want and knowing how we can give that to ourselves. It's so beautiful. One thing that I am grateful for is waking up feeling in a really good mood today and feeling confident to sit down and film in the park with everyone around me. I don't even care. I haven't cared at all this whole video. I'm really grateful for that. It's cool. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here and I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Bye.